Hey everyone. All right, today's video will be over how to solve word problems that involve inequalities. Your objective, I will be able to create two-step inequalities to solve real life problems. So here are the steps. First, we wanna identify all of the terms and the symbol for the inequality. That means we wanna know, is it less than, greater than, or less than or equal to, etc. Then we wanna write the inequality we will solve it, check it, and graph the solution. So identifying terms is very similar to equations. The variable, coefficient, and constant will all be identified the same way. And the total or end result will still be on the right of our inequality symbol. Now whenever we're trying to identify the symbol that should be used, there are some keywords to look for. So for the greater than sign, obviously if you see greater than, that's a good clue. More than, over a certain amount, anything like that. The less than symbol, you might actually see the words less than, you might see under. Greater than or equal to. If you see words like at least, no less than, or like a minimum amount, that's gonna have to be greater than or equal to. If something is less than or equal to, you might see something like at most, or no more than, or like a maximum. So keep this ready, and this is in your notes. Make sure you refer to this as we read through the word problem so that you can identify the symbol we should use. All right, example one. Sharon is planning a party. She can spend no more than $120. The birthday hall charges a $42 fee for all parties and $6.50 for each person. How many people can Sharon have at her party? All right, so we want to identify the symbol. So it says she can spend no more than $120. So if she can't spend more, that means she would need to spend less than $120. Now, she could spend exactly $120, so it could be less than or equal to, because we want what she spends to be less than $120 or equal to it, so that she doesn't go over her amount. And as you can see on the previous page, no more than was under our clue words for less than or equal to. Now, the variable is what the question is asking for, and it wants to know how many people Sharon can have, so I'm gonna put a P for the variable. The coefficient is the number multiplied. It says the birthday hall charges a $42 fee for all parties and $6.50 for each person. That word each is cluing us in that it's the multiplication. So the coefficient would be 650 and I'm just gonna write 6.5 because that means the same thing. So the constant would be $42. There's a $42 fee, and a fee is added on to the cost. And then we know that our total is $120 because that's the total that she has to spend. So if I were to write this out, I would say 6.5 times P plus 42 has to be less than or equal to 120. So we're gonna go ahead and solve that. I'm just gonna rewrite it. All right, the inverse of adding 42 would be to subtract 42. So I know that cancels and I'm left with 6.5P. And I'm going to carry down the symbol. 120 minus 42. I cannot do 0 minus 2, so I have to borrow. 10 minus 2 is 8. Borrow again. 11 minus 4 is 78. So now I'm going to separate the left and right side. So now I have 78 divided by 6.5. So the inverse of multiplying by 6.5 is to divide by 6.5. So I know I'll be left with the letter P. We're dividing by a positive, so our symbol stays the same. 
And now we are going to actually divide this out and I'm gonna come out here to the side to divide that. So in your notes, you may wanna write this out to the side. All right, if there's a decimal outside, we have to move it to make it look like a whole number. So we'll do the same thing inside. 65 goes into 78 one time. We get a remainder of 13. And 65 goes into 130 two even times. So that means that P is going to be less than or equal to 12. So whenever I check this problem, I know that I need to have a value, any value, that is less than or equal to 12. So as you saw in my last video, I like to use zero if I can. Zero is less than or equal to 12. So that means that 6.5 times zero plus 42 should be less than or equal to 120. Well, we know that anything times zero is zero. So I have zero plus 42 is less than or equal to 120. And yes, 42 is less than 120. So now I'm just gonna graph that. So I'm gonna put the 12. Now my inequality symbol points to the left, so I'm gonna shade to the left. And this would highlight everything that's less than 12. And since we have this line here, we know 12 is included. It can be equal to 12. So I will have a filled in circle at 12. All right, example two. A car sales associate receives a monthly salary of $1,700 plus $140 for every car they sell. How many cars must they sell monthly to earn at least $450? All right, so our clue word here for the symbol would be at least. So if something is at least, then you know that it has to be equal to that amount or greater than that amount. Because we want that to be like the minimum. We want everything to be like greater than that or that could be the smallest amount that's there. So it's greater than. And you can refer back to the other page that has all the keywords to see that at least means it has to be greater than or equal to. Now, the variable, it wants to know how many cars, so I'm gonna represent that with a C. So the coefficient is whatever number needs to be multiplied by the number of cars. Well, it says that the salesman gets $140 for every car that they sell. So the word every is cluing us in that that's multiplication. So you would multiply $140 for every car and it says that they already get a monthly salary of 1700. So you have to add 1700 to the amount of money they're getting per car. And then we wanna see how many they have to sell to get at least 4,500. So that's like our end result is $4,500. So I'm gonna write an inequality out of that. So that would be 140C plus 1700 equals 4500. I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite that here so that we can solve it. Oh, and I'm sorry, I put an equal sign there and that needs to be an inequality symbol. I missed that. Greater than or equal to. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and separate the left and right side and carry down the symbol. The inverse of adding 1,700 would be to subtract it. So we'd be left with 140C on the left. Over here, when we subtract, we get 2,800. So now the inverse of multiplying by 140 would be to divide 
by 140. I'm dividing by a positive, so my inequality symbol stays the same. And again, I'm going to come out to the side here and actually work out that division. All right, 140 cannot go into 2. It cannot go into 8, but it could go into 280 two times. Get a remainder of 0, bring down the next 0, and it would go in there 0 times. So that means C has to be greater than or equal to 20. All right, so now I want to check that answer. So I can choose any value that I want that is greater than or equal to 20. So I am going to choose 100 because I think that would be really easy to work with. So 140 times 100 plus 1700 should give me a value greater than or equal to 4,500. Well, if we multiply 140 times 100, we're gonna get 14,000. So 14,000 plus 1700 should be greater than or equal to 4,500. Well, we know 14,000 plus another 1,700 is obviously going to be much bigger than 4,500. So we know that that checks out. So now we're just gonna graph it. So here's 20. My inequality symbol points to the right, so I'm gonna shade to the right. And that would be values greater than 20. And since we have the equal part, it has to be greater than or equal to 20, I would have a filled in circle because 20 is a part of the solution. All right, now it's time for you to try. Make sure you identify all of your terms, solve the inequality, check and graph, and don't forget to show all of your work. We will see you next class day.